Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of What is in Our Stand Today. Today, as the title shows you, we are going to put together a DT Swiss 350 hub, but the process is pretty much the same for DT 240 and so on and so forth. They are very standardized in the way they do things, and in this case, they have a very easy to remove and re uh, remove service and reinstall your free hub body now because it's so easy uh on sunday my customer a customer of mine texted me and said my hub fell out and you know this piece is all over the floor i'm being a little bit more dramatic but that's basically the gist of um how he felt and uh, there was pieces all over the ground and he couldn't understand why the hub fell out and i said don't worry it's designed that way for ease of maintenance so i uh well this was over a phone call because he texted me and i i called him back or i called him and i said look don't worry about it we'll take care of it um in the coming week so let's take a look at what are the innards of this dt swiss 350 hub and hopefully that will come out on screen. So basically, this is the order in which they're going to go back together. And I have it going in this direction. So we have a spring that is conical. We have this bushing, of course, the free hub body, another spring, and then the ratchets, or some people call these the uh, ring drives and different names that people call them but dt swiss calls it ratchet now just so you know these come in different uh teeth and the more teeth the uh much quicker the engagement is of the hub so for example you can have you know it's 360 degrees so depending on how many teeth which I can just list that down below, uh, you get faster engagement if you have more teeth on these drives, uh, ratchets. And you can buy them and upgrade your current hub to have the different set of uh, ratchets. Okay, so to save time, I did the disassembly. I'm presenting it this way for the reassembly and I've already done the cleaning, so that's just to save some time. Okay, so what we're going to do now um, is I use this free hub grease from Shimano, but honestly, any really light grease will help. And by the way, if you put some heavy grease or like maybe um, some Phil Woods tenacious um, oil, if you're someone who doesn't like your free hub to make a lot of noise, uh, this is a way to quiet it down. And, you know, that's contrary to this whole free hub sound check that GCN does. I, I don't know why that's even a thing. I, I think it's actually stupid. Okay, so here is the hub that we're going to assemble. And it's a DT, let's see, that way you can see the logos there. DT350 and I apologize I am filming alone today because I have to get this out to the customer so the first thing you're going to do is put a little bit of a light grease and you know you should be doing this type of free hub and hub servicing often so you don't need to put a ton of grease in there okay so that's your hub is now greased now you're going to take your cone and so <clears throat> i'm sorry your spring <coughs> excuse me and what i want you to think about is the cone like on your uh quick release on your qr skewer the cones face in so if you've ever had some issue with your your rear derail, I'm sorry, your um your quick release, 
just make sure that the cones are facing in towards the bike. So that's what you're going to do here. The first thing you'll do is put this spring and you can see it's conical. So make, make sure the cone is facing up. All right, put that in there. Then put your bushing in there. Okay. Then you're going to set up your free hub body. And we're going to take a little bit of grease and put that inside there. And you can see that's just a really light amount of grease. Or it's a light grease and then a light amount of it. And then the same thing, the conical portion of the spring faces up. Oopsie. Of course, that always happens when you're filming live. And then you take your two rings or your two ratchets, lube those up nicely. And on the sides as well. And what you'll do with those with those ratchets is you'll mesh them together. Make sure they kind of, you can feel like, okay, the teeth are engaged. So you have a smooth side here and a smooth side here. So each one of those ratchets has a smooth side and a notched side. Make sure those are together. And then... Push those Put those onto the hub, and you can feel that spring pushing, right? And then take your free hub body with your cone facing up and slide that over the axle and kind of rotate it a little bit. Boom, there it is. Okay, so you can hear that the ratchet's working. Then the last piece is the end cap. And it's nice, it's a good idea to put a little bit of lube on there because this, there's no, there's no wrench flats in here. So it, you pull it out either with your hands or sometimes I have to use needle nose. But you want this to come in and out fairly easily. So pop that on there. And just with your the heels of your palms, just push on there. And that should lock that end cap on there. Now, just give it a check. So that's working. So now we're just going to put the cassette back on give this back to the customer and he's going to be happy. Okay, if you found this information useful, informative, I know I'm long-winded, but folks that come to my channel, they're used to it by now. I like to talk to my viewers as if you were here in the store and we're having a conversation. And you're visiting with me and I'm taking care of your bike parts, your components, and then I give you back your stuff and everyone's is happy because they had a pleasurable experience at the bike shop. So that's how I run my business. That's how I wish to run my channel as well. Please like and subscribe. We're so close to a thousand subscribers and it doesn't cost you anything, but it means the world to me if you would subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. In the meantime, we'll see you up the road.